This is the Channel Tunnel, or the Channel, linking up the United Kingdom and France. I remember when I first heard about this a couple years ago, I literally did not believe it was actually a thing. It opened in 1994 though, how did I go this long without knowing it existed? It is the only fixed link between Great Britain and continental Europe. So it looks like both the UK and France dug their own tunnels, and then the meeting point was somewhere around here. Why did the British dig so much more than the French? Then we have these different layers of crust, or chalk, or clay, or whatever. Does anyone else wish they made this tunnel out of like glass or at least something see-through so you can like look at the fishes and sharks and stuff like that I don't know if that is physically possible but I'm just saying if sea level decreased by 1,000 meters for some reason when it said a thousand meters I assume this map would actually look way more different you could still see like the overall continental shape to all these places but of course there are some areas more affected than others Europe is unrecognizable the North Sea is gone so is that English Channel the tunnel was rendered completely useless now there would be a land bridge to get to the Faroe Islands all the way to Iceland Iceland and Greenland. Oh, you can even make it to North America. Wow. The Caribbean almost ceases to be a thing. Almost all the islands are connected, except for a few right here in the middle. The Persian Gulf no longer exists, but the Red Sea is now just a lake. At least you're still there. The Black Sea and Caspian Seas are still around, and the Mediterranean is also uh, now just a lake. There's a lot of lakes, actually. Japan is connected to Asian mainland as well, and Australia is very close to being in the same boat. Ah, boat, get it. But I think they're just barely missing it. This is where you need to create another one of those channels. Ooh, and at least even looks like we get a little bit of Zealandia, the old lost continent. So I mean, yeah, there would be some changes, I just expected way more. Is it fair to say though, sea level decrease is a lot better than sea level increase? I mean, getting more land can't be that big of a problem, right? Or would that land be basically useless? You'd also be turning all the coastal cities into well, not coastal anymore. But then again, at least those places still exist. Ah yes, Gun Country, a map of the USA consisting of 150 toy guns. Okay, nice shape, I can see it. Wait, what is all these exactly? Oh, I see an Uzi in there. Oh, that's a work of art. Is this made in, in VR or is this like a real life thing? I kind of want it in both. Countries that have or have had openly LGBT head of governments. So we have Iceland, Ireland, Belgium, and Luxembourg, and then the elephant in the room, Serbia? I expected those others, not gonna lie, but I definitely didn't expect you guys. I feel like this information could have been presented a lot better just by using this Wikipedia screenshot. Did we really need a map? I don't think we did. A handy chart showing us a lunar eclipse versus a solar eclipse, so that's when the moon is in between the earth and the sun. And finally, an apocalypse. If the sun is ever in between the moon and the earth, then we're gonna have a problem. Is it even possible to fix the sun in between the distance of the moon and the earth? The sun is massive. The sun's diameter is over 800,000 miles and the distance between the earth to the moon is 200. So yeah, the answer is no. Man, you ain't kidding. That really would be the apocalypse then. 494 million people still defecate outdoors. What a transition there. Share of the population practicing open defecation in 2020. So the yellow countries are 0 to 1%. The slightly darker yellow is between 2 to 5. Then we get to the orange countries at 6 to 25%. That is a huge percentage range. How are you going to put all those people between 6 to 25%? So if you're in orange, I mean, 6% is, all right, Right, you're still under double digits, but at the same time, it could be a quarter of your population defecating outside. That's that's a huge difference. So I don't really know what to say about these orange countries. We've got a lot of South Asia, Mongolia, Indonesia, but then there's the red countries between 26 and 50 percent. All right, yeah, that's not good. But then we have the ultra red right here, 51 to 68 percent. What a specific number. You know they chose that number because one is going 68 percent. Like that's the highest one. I want to know which one it is. Is it Chad? That is the ultimate Chad move, defecating on all the the soy boys. The only thing more interesting than this data is the no data part. What map have you ever seen where they actually have the data for like North Korea and Greenland, but they don't have the data for Argentina or Bosnia, a European country? How are they getting the data from other places, Malaysia, Iran, but not in this? I'm real confused about that. It seems like some pretty easy data to gather. I mean, just kind of sit outside with like a clipboard, start writing down what you see or smell. Economy size comparison of every country in the world. So we're starting with uh, Tuvalu all the way at the very bottom. Oh, poor Tuvalu. Why do I feel like this is going to be one of those like space animations showing you how big the galaxy really is? Because we're going to get to places like the USA and China and they're going to make these things look like cells, like atoms inside of a cell. Okay, we're getting through a lot of island nations or city states pretty much. Oh good, the numbers right down here. All right, yeah, this is going to be ridiculous. Keep Keep a lookout for Tuvalu right there in the center. Is this going to be creating some sort of spiral galaxy almost? We still haven't reached one trillion yet. Wait, have we? 
Wait, what's a trillion again? Wait, I don't even know what, like, economically are we talking about here. Like, GDP or something? All right, here we go. Now we're getting to the big countries. Turkey, Saudi Arabia, the Dutch, Mexico. Here is probably the top 10 right here. Italy, UK, Germany, India, Japan, China, the USA. Does anyone else have the weird sensation to play Agario right now? Agario, the economic edition. But speaking about economies of other countries, let's look at the entire economy of Denmark with the Lego Group annual revenue, because this is probably where 95% of Denmark's profit comes from. I wish this went further back than 2003, but in 2003 they were making 0.9 billion, so almost a billion. Then they actually had a drop off in 2004, slowly rose as the years went on by. Even during the financial crisis, it didn't really go down too much. In 2012, they reported 3.1 billion. 2016 was almost an all time high, it actually went down in 2017, but now in 2020, during the pandemic, 4.87 billion. Remind me to invest in these guys. I actually would not expect this. Like, what is going on exactly? Because I thought as a whole, toy sales were going down with like kids just playing online digitally and stuff like that. I literally like am thinking of them synonymously now. I'm assuming that Lego was able to market their stuff to like collector's edition. There's a lot of adults now that still love Lego. So maybe they made up for like the loss in kids. What does it sound like a bunch of kids got oofed or something? In summer, on average, when's the hottest hour of the day? I'm actually really surprised to see this much variation. So it really depends on the region of the US you're in. It actually kind of looks like it, it depends on on your longitude even, at least if you're not near a coastline. So I live in Southern California, it looks like it's around 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Of course, this is during the summertime, not to be confused with the winter, right now the sun is going down around like 4 p.m., 5 p.m. Hawaii out there in the middle of the Pacific usually are experiencing the hottest temperatures at 3 p.m. But weirdly, when you move further inland, especially right here in these flat areas, Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Texas, 5 to 6 p.m., that's really late to be having the hottest hour of the day. 6 p.m., like it's what you swear wetting balls and trying to have dinner. I guess that'd be nice. You don't have to add any salt on your plate. Just wait for a drip to come down. <laughs> oh, that's disgusting. Why'd I say that? Can we assume that since the coastlines are usually hottest at 3 p.m., it's probably not getting that hot near the coastlines because of like the currents and the winds from the ocean? Does it pick up around those times or like to keep the temperature down? Is it? Ah, I don't even know what the hell I'm trying to say. Like it doesn't get that hot on the coastline. So is that why it's only 3 p.m. in a lot of these places? It would continue to get hotter, but it doesn't actually. Whereas these regions in red, they hit three and it's pretty hot, but it just keeps getting hotter every hour because they don't have that like wind. I don't even know if that makes sense, but oh, I just now realized time zones is a big factor in this. Okay, I need to become a weatherman. Okay, I kind of find this one fascinating for a couple different reasons. Number of birthday posts on my Facebook wall per year it's because it's this person's Facebook wall. Wall. This, these are other people wishing him happy birthday, I think. So he started his Facebook in 2009. He had over 40 people wish him happy birthday. 2010, it like almost tripled. And then from there, it almost doubled in 2011. There's a small dip in 2012, went back up in 2013. And then ever since then, it's gone smaller and smaller. So I just want to know, could this be because Facebook activity is going down? Specifically, if this person created their Facebook in 2009, it, they must be kind of older now. I'm assuming they were probably in high school at this point. So they are nearing their 30s. So is this guy's friends just not on Facebook anymore? That's got to be part of it. Overall Facebook activity, people on Facebook just across the whole website, I'm sure it's gone down too. Or the final thing is even if those people were on Facebook, do people care about wishing happy birthday anymore? Like when you, they're not seeing you, you know, you're like living your life, you got a career. I just don't think there's a reason for people to be posting happy birthday. I mean, it's now lower than 20 as of the last three years. And I'm pretty sure this would be the same exact data if I looked at my thing too. Probably just like a combination of all those factors. Maybe some of your grandparents aren't sane enough to wish happy birthday or they're not around. The oldest businesses in every country around the world. In the darkest of reds, we have the oldest of old countries over a thousand years old. And in the blue, we have companies that were created less than like a hundred years ago. So obviously the countries that kind of just got their independence, yeah, their companies are going to be created less than a hundred years ago. Sorry, Africa, when it comes to the imperialization, North and South Korea aren't even that old. So yeah, knowing some history helps with this. Wait, I thought Japan Japan's oldest company was Nintendo. You're saying Nintendo's over a thousand years old? I don't think so, buddy. It's oldest businesses, so maybe that's different. Yeah, uh, Japan has Congo Gummy. What is that? Congo Gummy. That is the oldest business. Started in 578 AD. Congo Gummy? This is a Japanese construction company. Is it one of those things where, like, you know, it started off, like, as an old thing, and then it kind of just disappeared for a couple centuries, and then someone brought it back, so it was started 
started in like 500 AD, but then it ceased to exist for like a thousand years. Someone just brought it back. I mean, I guess that counts, but I mean, it doesn't really. This doesn't say longest continually company or whatever the word would be. I've never heard of so many of these places. Oh yeah, a lot of them are breweries. I know that for sure. Or wineries. That's what Germany is. Belgium has one too. A bar in Ireland, of course. Oh, so you could have started the company even if you were a colony. Mexico has one under Spain. La Casa de Mon India de Mexico. Oh, they've even separated Northern Ireland. That's surprising. Oh, the Australian Post. Okay, yeah. If you started your first company in the 1800s. Some sort of mail service sounds about right. Oh, a journal. Okay, so like news papers and things like that. The first company in Egypt was a railway? What was Egypt doing before that? Oh uh, yeah, the oldest company for Kosovo, 1999, because Kosovo is, uh, yeah, Kosovo was established in 2008, but I guess that region had its first little thing going on in 1999 under Serbia or something. It's fun to see how the businesses change depending on the century they were started in, because a lot of the more recent stuff are airlines. U.S. college enrollment by gender, 1947 to 2019, so it started off with a lot more men going in. A couple decades pass and then something really drastic happens in like the late 70s early 80s women take over the men but the gap is still pretty close but it starts to widen in the 90s and then yeah I've heard a lot of reports about this ever since like 2010 there's been a drop in college but before the drop the women were just dominating four million more at least there seems to have been a bigger drop in women though and the women are maybe coming back this is as of 2019 though 2020 probably changed a lot the men are still dropping a little bit and then there's the other thing about this graph just showing like how many more people attend college. Now there's obviously more people in the US than there were in the 1950s. That's got to be a factor. This is not just showing percentages. This is going to be very interesting to see where this goes for the next decade. Oh, there's an interesting find here. A lot of people theorize that in the 70s, men were going to college to avoid the drafts to Vietnam. And there seems to be a huge decline or at least a pretty noticeable decline in like maybe the 1975 region when we were pulling out of Vietnam. All the guys were like, oh, I guess I don't have to go to college anymore. Bam. Which led the women to take over. So Oh, there you go. If you want more dudes to go to college, you gotta send us to war. <laughs> Wait, no, don't do that. Ah, uh, here we go. The top 50 most used passwords. The number one most used password is 123456. I remember I used to know like a college professor that I was a TA for and this was his password. He was like the head of the department too. Like, I don't know what these people are thinking. I'm surprised the number one password isn't password. I thought that was the joke. How was number 10 dragon? I've never thought once to put my password as dragon. Baseball is ahead of football in terms of passwords? That's surprising. Where is this data coming from? From like a around the world? If it was around the world, I would think football would definitely, because, you know, football is considered soccer around the world. Shadow. What are some of these? The most common word selections in 10 million passwords. Oh, so these are passwords with just these words in it. They might have different characters or numbers in it. Uh, I'm not going to, like, you know, point myself out here, but you know what? Just remind me to change up my password after this video. Uh, the passwords that just have I love and then something. Oh, man. Oh, man. Names in passwords and names in usernames. Yeah, that, that's kind of a problem. Most common superhero passwords, days of the week. Is anyone else getting Ooh. paranoid right now? And big thank you to my patrons. Rye the Pie. This is Gabe. Why am I doing this? I love Mark. Drew has a small pee pee, but I give him money anyway. Dalton D. Drew's Argentinian grandpa. Bring back Polar Arian Ball. After Hours. Barnsky W. Ivan Lima. Jesse C. Luxembourg Lover. Majestic Unicorn. Max Cooper. Nick Blorf. Mine Brothers 999X. And Stormtrooper 501. Thank you.